Well, thank you. It's great to be here. You know, first I'll tell you, um, just to respond to Ron, I, he continues to lie about my record. I actually said his don't say gay bill didn't go far enough because it only talked about gender until the third grade. And I said it shouldn't be done at all, that that's for parents to talk about. It shouldn't be talked about with schools. In reference to donors coming on board, look, we will take support from anybody we can take support from. But I have been a conservative fighter all my life. I was a Tea Party candidate when I became governor. We opposed every single corporate bailout we possibly could. We passed tort reform. We passed one of the toughest illegal immigration laws in the country. We passed pro-life bills. We moved an unemployment from 11 percent to 3 percent. We took on the unions, and we took on Obama when it came to the unions, the Syrian refugees, and everything in between. And so I've had a fight. And so as much as Ron says that, that's not true. But when it comes to these corporate people that want to suddenly support us, We'll take it. But you can, they don't, I don't ask them what their policies are. They ask me what my policies are. And I tell them what it is. Sometimes they agree with me. Sometimes they don't. Some don't like how tough I am on China. Some don't like the fact that I've signed pro-life bills. Some don't like the fact that I may oppose corporate bailouts. That doesn't matter. That's who I am. And that's why the most conservative grassroots group in the country, Americans for Prosperity, endorsed me last week. Ambassador Haley, I'm coming to you. Iran is on the threshold of becoming a nuclear state. The Wall Street Journal reported that Iranian military leaders gave the green light for Hamas's attack on Israel. You said in last month's debate that, by contrast to the Biden administration's approach to Iran, you would, quote, punch them once and punch them hard. Were you saying that it's time to bomb Iran? No, I was not saying it's time to bomb Iran, but I will tell you, I dealt with Iran every day when I was at the United Nations, and they only respond to strength. What they don't respond to is when you weaken the sanctions like they did on Iran that allowed China to send them billions to fill their proxies. What they don't respond to is when you give $6 billion for five hostages. That only makes them want more hostages. What they don't respond to is when they do 140 strikes on our men and women in Syria and Iraq, and we do nothing but just some small shots back. You've got to punch them. You've got to punch them hard and let them know that. That's the only way they're going to respond. So the way you do that is you go after their infrastructure in Syria and Iraq where they're hitting our soldiers. That's what you do. And then that's when they'll back off. The problem is you have to see that all of these are related. If you look at the fact Russia was losing that war with Ukraine, Putin had hit rock bottom. They had raised the draft age to 65. He was getting drones and missiles, drones from Iran, missiles from North Korea. And so what happened? When he hit rock bottom, all of a sudden, his other friend, Iran, Hamas goes and invades Israel and butchers those people on Putin's birthday. There is no one happier right now than Putin because all of the attention America had on Ukraine suddenly went to Israel. And that's what they were hoping is going to happen. We need to make sure that we have full clarity that there is a reason, again, that Taiwanese want to help Ukrainians because they know if Ukraine wins, China won't invade Taiwan. There's a reason the Ukrainians want to help Israelis, because they know that if Iran wins, Russia wins. These are all connected. But what wins all of that is a strong America, not a weak America. And that's what Joe Biden's given us. Ambassador Haley, homeownership has always been part of the American dream, but it's increasingly out of reach for younger Americans. This year, mortgage rates reached 30-year highs. Home prices have risen $190,000 over the past decade. Is this the free market at work, or should the federal government do something to make homes more affordable? Well, first of all, I mean, you're exactly right. My daughter just got married, and I saw how hard it was for her and her husband to buy a home. Right now, the average homeowner in America is 49 years old. You've got young people everywhere. That used to be the American dream, and now it's out of reach. But you look at what happened. You first of all look at what the Fed did. The Fed did a terrible job when they allowed all of that money to go through. You saw the Treasury bond rates go up. That affected mortgage rates. That affected automobile rates. That affected insurance rates. And so now we have a high interest rate. You've got a supply issue. Ask any builder. The supply issues have continued to build, be there. That's caused the rate to go up. And then you've got insurances that that have gone up. And so what you have is a lot of younger people who, one, can't 
afford a home, but two, the banks aren't lending them any money. They've made the regulation so hard that they don't want to give loans on mortgages anymore. So what we have to do is we have to open it up. We have to, one, grow our economy so that people have more money in their pockets. We've got to look at the supply chain and make sure that we are funneling that so that builders don't have to sit there and go overseas to find things. And then we need to make sure that we really stop paying down this debt, make sure that we stop the borrowing, stop the spending. I'll veto any spending bill that doesn't take us back to pre-COVID levels because our kids are not going to forgive us for all the spending that happened. And as much as everybody wants to talk about how Donald Trump had a good economy, $9 trillion in debt he did just in four years. And we're all paying the price of that, including those mortgage prices. Ambassador Haley. House Republicans yesterday hauled elite university presidents up to Capitol Hill to answer for the displays of anti-Semitism on college campuses. These leaders, including the president of Harvard, were asked whether calling for the genocide of the Jews would violate school policies against harassment and intimidation. All of them said it would depend on the context, including whether that speech veers into conduct. How do you think these schools and the rest of society should balance the imperative of free speech against the need to prevent radical activists from harassing and intimidating others? It was disgusting to see what happened. You know, if this had been the KKK that was doing protests on those campuses, every one of those college presidents would have been up in arms. This is just as bad. The idea that they would go and allow that kind of pro-Hamas protest or agree with the genocide of Jews and try and say that they needed context on that, there is no context to that. This is what we need to do to deal with it. First of all, we have got to get foreign money out of our universities. You've got Arab money, you've got Chinese money, you've got others. We need to go to every university and say you either take foreign money or you take American money, but the days of taking both are over. The second thing we need to do... The second thing we need to do is we need, Biden made a mistake not including anti-Zionism in the definition of anti-Semitism. If you don't think that Israel has a right to exist, that is anti-Semitic. We will change the definition so that every government, every school has to acknowledge the definition for what it is. The third thing is we really do need to ban TikTok once and for all. And let me tell you why. For every 30 minutes that someone watches TikTok every day, they become 17% more anti-Semitic, more pro-Hamas based on doing that. We now know that 50% of adults 18 to 25 think that Hamas was warranted in what they did with Israel. That's a problem. When campuses also don't go and protect when they have these rallies and you've got students that are scared, we need to go to these universities and say, if you're not going to protect these students, if you're not going to acknowledge anti-Semitism, we'll take your tax-exempt status away. That'll fix it, and that'll take care of it for good. When you talk about fentanyl like you did before, let's look at something else. Yes, I think we should send special operations over and take out the cartels. I think we should do a a remain in Mexico policy so they never step foot in U.S. soil in the first place. But look at where fentanyl came from. Let's go to the heart of the matter. It came from China. That's why we need to end all normal trade relations with China until they stop murdering Americans with fentanyl. I promise you, they need our economy. They will immediately stop that. But this is where Trump went wrong. Trump was good on trade, but that's all he was with China. Because here he allowed fentanyl to continue to come over. He continued to allow them to take, he would give them technology that would build up their military and hurt us. He allowed the Chinese infiltration for them to buy up farmland, to put money in our universities, and to continue to do things that were harmful for America. We now have a spy base in Cuba and police stations, and Trump didn't do anything about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our country is in chaos. We see it on the southern border. We see it in our on our streets and our cities. We see it on college campuses. We feel it with our economy, with inflation and with debt. And we feel it around the world with wars in Europe and within the Middle East. We have to stop the chaos, but you can't defeat Democrat chaos with Republican chaos. And that's what Donald Trump gives us. My approach is different. No drama, no vendettas, no whining. I envision an America where we're protected from illegal immigration and Chinese infiltration. I envision an America 
where we unleash our economy and we reject socialism. But more importantly, I envision an America where we rediscover our national purpose and our pride. Thank you. I crush Joe Biden in Thank the polls. You. And Thank if you, you give me this chance, we will crush him in November and take our Thank country you, back. Governor. Go to Nikki Thank Haley. Thank you, Ambassador Haley.